Hello, second grade. Welcome to Science with Miss Conley. In today's lesson, we are going to talk about how the caterpillar goes from the caterpillar life stage to the chrysalis. And we're going to observe the formation of the chrysalis, which is actually the third stage in a butterfly's life cycle. Hmm. Let me take a look at this picture right here. From what I know, it looks like the chrysalis is actually starting to form. This is the hard outer shell here, and it still needs to continue to form to go up here. This is part of the molting, which will eventually fall off. And that is the shedding of its skin in order for new growth to occur. We learned that a couple weeks ago. Here are some vocabulary words. I'm going to say a word and I would like for you to repeat after me. Proboscis. Chrysalis. J-shape. Pupa. Silk bottom. And transparent. Let's take a look at each of these vocabulary words. Proboscis. A proboscis is a sucking mouth, port, mouth part that is flexible. It's also located on a butterfly. This is the proboscis. Sometimes people refer to it as a tongue. It's not really a tongue, it's a proboscis. It extends out and that is what a butterfly uses in order to get its nectar. Chrysalis, we've talked about, that is the hard outer shell that a caterpillar forms in order for it to go through the metamorphosis process. Chrysalis and pupa are used interchangeably. So pupa is the chrysalis stage, the chrysalis stage is the pupa. J-shape is the shape that a caterpillar forms right before it is going to go into a chrysalis. Caterpillar stops eating, it gets really slow, and then all of a sudden it forms a J-shape and then the chrysalis starts to, to grow. Silk bottom, that's the anchor the caterpillar makes that allows it to hang upside down and stay attached while going through the chrysalis stage. This right here is the silk bottom. This is what the caterpillar makes. It attaches itself to a leaf or a branch. This becomes hard and then it allows it to hang. And the last one is transparent. Transparent means it is see-through or it is clear. Sometimes when their chrysalis is formed, sometimes it is transparent and you can actually see the butterfly forming. Let's reflect before we go on to this slide. What is a proboscis? Hopefully you said a proboscis is a sucking mouth part that is flexible, which is part of the butterfly. Here are some guiding questions for this lesson. What is a chrysalis? How do you think the chrysalis is being formed? This right here is a perfect example of transparent. This is the chrysalis and it is actually see-through. Not always will you see something like this, so it's pretty cool. You could tell that the butterfly is about ready to emerge. Let's review the life cycle of a caterpillar. We've talked about the egg stage. The caterpillar comes out, it starts to eat the shell, it eats leaves, it continues to grow and molt. After several moltings, it becomes very still, it forms a J shape, and then the chrysalis begins to form. And this right here is the silk bottom where it attaches itself to a leaf or a branch. 
after several weeks, an adult butterfly emerges. And then the last stage of the, of the cycle of a caterpillar is the adult butterfly. Hmm, let's think. What is the last stage of the life cycle of a caterpillar? Hopefully you said the last stage is the butterfly. What is the chrysalis stage? Once fully grown, the caterpillar forms itself into a pupa or a chrysalis. This is where metamorphosis takes place. They usually do this on twigs or a safe hidden area around the host of a plant. The pupa stage may last a few weeks to several months depending upon the species. During this time, a hardened case forms around the pupa to protect it from predators and extreme weather conditions. And inside, the tissue, limbs, and organs of the caterpillar transform. And the result is a beautiful butterfly. Hmm. Let's think before we go on to this slide. What do caterpillars form? Excuse me. Where do caterpillars form their chrysalis? Hopefully you said they form their chrysalis around twigs or safe hidden areas where the host plant is. Now let's watch a video that we saw at the beginning of this unit. Place close attention to what happens in the chrysalis stage. So we've already seen this video but it's okay to watch a video twice and it actually gives you very, very good detail of what is actually happening in the chrysalis stage. It is a very interesting process and really like none other. You do for the power to fly. How about shedding your skin and dissolving your own muscles? Now, believe it or not, that gruesome process is how caterpillars earn their wings. Here's what you might not know about what's inside a caterpillar's cocoon. Contrary to popular belief, this is not a cocoon. Only certain moths build cocoons, which are like a silky sleeping bag that covers the insect. This, on the other hand, is what's called a... It's not a sack or a pouch. It's actually the caterpillar's own body. When it's time for the transformation to begin, the caterpillar's body ramps up production of a hormone called ectosome, and that causes it to cast off its outer coating, sort of like how a snake sheds its skin. And underneath is a hard shell, similar to the exoskeleton of a beetle. After that, life for the little caterpillar gets oozy. First, it releases enzymes called caspases. These rip apart and dissolve cells in its muscles, digestive system, and other organs. But the enzymes don't quite liquefy all of the caterpillar. They leave key structures intact, like breathing tubes. At the same time, specialized cells called imaginal discs start waking up. Before the chrysalis stage, these discs were kept dormant by a series of hormones in the caterpillar's body. But once the transformation begins, those hormone levels take a nosedive, giving these discs the opportunity to do what they do best, build a butterfly. You see, each disc contains the genetic recipe to form a different adult body part, starting from the inside out. After one week, the digestive system of the butterfly is well on its way. And by day 16, the adult's legs, wings, eyes, and mouth are all present and in working order. Now, two weeks is a remarkably short time for all of this to happen. 
since each imaginal disk starts out with only about 50 cells and must multiply those into thousands just to form a single wing. And if you checked out the chrysalis around day 16, you might even be able to see those brilliantly colored wings. Because for some species, their chrysalis turns transparent in their final days of metamorphosis. Now, fully formed, it's time to hit the road. The chrysalis splits open down the center and the butterfly escapes. Meanwhile, a reddish liquid spills out. That's all the waste the butterfly, nay, caterpillar, produced during its stay. Once its wings expand and harden, it's ready to mate, pollinate, and slurp nectar to its heart's desire. But one of the most interesting parts of all, research suggests that butterflies and moths can remember their caterpillar days. In one study, researchers trained moth caterpillars to associate an odor with an electric shock. So whenever the larvae smelled it, they'd move away. But even after they transformed into adult moths, they still avoided the scary smell. It makes you wonder what else they could recall from their younger days. Whoa, that was an amazing video that showed you the process and what actually occurs during the chrysalis stage. If we had a classroom, you would actually be able to see during that chrysalis stage, you would actually be able to see the caterpillar moving about in the chrysalis right before it emerges. Hmm, let's think. What makes a cocoon? What is a caspasis? Hopefully you said a moth makes a cocoon, not a butterfly. Oftentimes people get those two confused. A moth makes a cocoon and a butterfly makes a chrysalis. Caspasis, even that is a new one for Miss Conley. That's the re release of enzymes which dissolve the cells and other organs in the caterpillar and that is what allows the caterpillar to transform and change its body into a butterfly. All right, boys and girls, that concludes the end of this lesson for science. Your assignment is this Ed Puzzle, which you should have already have done. See you later.